Have you booked that trip to Ireland yet? Press the green button and visit the island of Ireland. See Ireland.com. Eurogold is driven by being the best civil engineering contractor in the Northwest, ensuring its clients are given the highest level of service that they deserve. Eurogold work in a wide range of industry sectors, including house building, highways, commercial, and industrial build. La Vita is an award-winning, independently run Italian restaurant. Located on Rose Lane in the heart of Liverpool, real Italian style dishes using the best ingredients, skillfully prepared by our chefs. Come and try our serious Italian experience. The Warrington Irish Club friendly and welcoming club keeping the Irish culture alive. We have Irish and country music every Saturday night, tribute nights, race nights, charity nights and karaoke. All live sports are shown on big screens. We have snooker, dominoes and crown green bowling teams along with arts and craft. Pop in for a friendly welcome and book your event at the Warrington Irish Club. Give Frank a call on 01925 243 363. Mulligan's Funeral and Monumental Services are a family-owned funeral service first established by the late Brian Mulligan in 1996. We provide funeral homes in Gorton, Manchester and Reddish, Stockport and we pride ourselves on giving a friendly and professional service to all the families who use our service. Contact us on 0161 432 0809 Founded in Kilkenny, Ireland in 1702, but lost on a bet on a horse race in Deauville, France, 1918. Sullivan's was re-established a few years ago by direct descendants of two great Kilkenny brewing families, the Smithicks and the Sullivans. We're about to embark on our own journey across the United Kingdom. But this time, we won't bet the brewery. <laughs> Sullivan's. Brewing is in our blood. Press the green button and visit the island of Ireland. See Ireland.com. Hello everyone and welcome to the show. This week we're at the Liverpool Iris Centre for a lovely celebration for Kira Lochran who won the World Championship in Irish Dancing. The Eurogoal Group and Civil Engineering Contractors held a very successful golf day at the Marriott Hotel in Manchester. The idea behind it was to raise as much money as possible for Hope House Hospice. Well last week we went along for the check presentation to realise that they had raised the enormous amount of £30,000. Nicola, tell me a little bit about Hope House. So we support seriously ill local children across the whole of our area, which is North, Mid, Shropshire and Cheshire. 750 children and families currently receive support from us, so it's vital that we're there for them. My goodness, you cover a vast area. We do. So we've got two hospices, one based in Conway and one in Oswestry. We obviously support children and families across the whole area within that region as well. It costs us 7.5 million a year to run our services. That's not just at the hospice, that's in the home and communities as well. So costs are rising, so I'm sure that's going to be more as well going forwards for next year. We found out about Hope House 
because we'd already been raising money for Hope House, so we did know about all the good work they do mm. already, but never thought we'd need to use them ourselves. We'd never been to Hope House before, and it was a completely different um, surrounding to what you would think. So when we first went to Snowflake Suite, it was like just being in a mini house. It was just a, like, like a, a self-contained house. Yeah, it's just, it's just like your child has got, you know, their own bedroom um, for them to, to rest and you can just pop in and see them whenever you like and spend as much time as possible with your child. We had about five days with Arthur in the Snowflake Suite and, it, and it, it, it felt like enough time, didn't it, to... Yeah. ..to grieve properly and to, to say goodbye. I, I don't know, for me, it was like life hasn't been snatched away too quick. We want to ensure that nobody suffers the death of a child alone. It's an absolute awful thing. We can't stop those children from dying, but we can make it a more safer, supported environment for them, show mum and dad um, the support that they can get from us and just hold their hand and put an arm around them to guide them through this awful time. Now we heard from Nicola and she was telling us about what Hope House does and how they care for so many people and that this 30,000 is going to mean so much more to them. Yeah, well it does Martin and like I said, it's, it's such a worthy cause um, and we're just so pleased that we can just help in any way that we can. A huge amount of effort goes into arranging the Euro Gold Golf uh, Day every single year. But when we see a result like this, £30,000, it makes it all worthwhile. Yeah, it does, Martin. Um, we didn't expect it, obviously, with the current climate. Um, but I think after a couple of years of no one being able to go to anything like this, they just went all out on the day. And yeah, we're really pleased with the amounts that we've been able to raise to help Hope House. Yeah, and do you know, everybody enjoyed that day. I think it was just a release after COVID and it was a beautiful sunny day as well. Everybody was out playing golf. It was a great occasion. Yeah, like a few comments people made, it was like really good to see people. So a lot of like people, like clients and um, suppliers of ours don't really see each other all, like, all the time. It's only really on days like that. So a few people had said it was great to get together with everybody, old friends that they haven't seen for a couple of years. And I think the weather definitely helped. Um, so yeah, all round, it was a brilliant day. Liam, you must feel very proud to be involved in the Eurogold Golf Day and raise £30,000. Uh, yes, obviously. <laughs> it was a great day. Um, big thanks to our suppliers who've raised the £30,000. I, I, all I do is put pressure on them to, to give some money to a, uh, an amazing charity. Um, but yeah, every year we're, we're inundated with, with offers of, uh, of uh, sponsorship. So uh, uh, thank you very much to all our suppliers. For a cause like this, do you know, people respond to it, don't they? Absolutely, yeah. yeah it's, it, it, is, it is such a great charity. And um, as I said, we're, we're always we're oversubscribed, really. If there were more holes in the golf course, we could have, we could have uh, more sponsorship. You know, every, every year we have so many people wanting to sponsor and wanting to know about the charity as well. So you do, you kind of, it might, might be the only time in the year we all meet. So yeah, it is, uh, it has turned into a bit of a, uh, <laughs> a, a yearly outing, yeah. Food was lovely, the staff are great. Um, the course, I never went on the course, obviously, because I don't play golf, but <laughs> I believe the course is really good. Um, so yeah, everyone had a really good day all round. We were a little bit worried in case we didn't raise nearly as much as what we have in the past. But when we tallied it up after the day, it was like no one could believe it that we'd actually raised that much. And it is a lot of effort. Um, it's you know it can be a bit frustrating sometimes when you're waiting for replies and stuff like that. And things don't always go to plan. But on the day you would never know. It's such a worthy cause, um, and we're just so pleased that we can just help in any way that we can. This is a huge amount of money. It's just. To know that there are people within our communities that will go and support us and organise a event like that and it will raise this huge amount of money, it's just fantastic and we can't thank them enough and our families, I know they will be ever so grateful for that as well. When my brother Arthur died, I was around five or six 
and Hope House helped because I was able to say goodbye and I was able to talk to him while he was still there. I was nine years old when my brother Arthur died and when we went to Hope House they took us out to help us learn how to deal with what had happened. They came to our school and taught us different coping mechanisms and it was really helpful. One of the coping mechanisms they taught us was to draw, so we draw Arthur up in heaven and write about how, what he was doing and how he was because we were quite young when he died. One of the things I did with Sherry was write an Arthur book and in the Arthur book I wrote a poem and this, the poem I wrote was for his funeral and it was, my baby brother Arthur was as funny as can be. I liked my mum to paint his nails so he could be like me. I'd wrap him up in blankets and put a flower in his hair. Even though he was a boy, he really didn't care. We used to go in the snowflake suite with the kids and we'd play all Arthur's music, uh, all his favourite songs he used to have on and loads of stuff from his bedroom. Loads of stuff, yeah. And Teddies his, and, and his quilts duvet and, yeah. and everything. So it was just like being at home. Katie used to lie on the bed with him, chatting away to him, which was nice, wasn't it? Yeah, it was just, it was just like normal, like being at home. There, there was just no difference, was there, for her? No. It just it was just all a natural experience, I suppose. There's no specific project at the moment that we're fundraising for because our, we need to fundraise for our costs, for our general, just the hospice be the hospice is being open. So it will just go towards our day-to-day -day running and make, make sure that we can reach all those families and children that need us and our support. How can people like support you, get involved, make donations and generally help you out? The best way to um, help us is to have a look on our website. We've got so many events coming up uh, this year, the end of this year and into next year. And they're all on our website. It's hopehouse.org.uk. And also there's a donate button there. If anybody just wants to make a general donation, we're always so grateful of any support. Nicola, on behalf of all the families that you support at Hope House, thank you so much. Oh, thank you. And thank you to your Gold too. Now, planning for next year, have you thought about it yet? We have. We were, we've, uh, we're back at Worsley again. Oh, wow. Mm. Well, it's a great, a great venue, of course, and the, and the golf course there is beautiful. It is, yeah. yeah, yeah. I, I don't know about the course because I don't play. But, uh, yeah, the venue was great and they were brilliant with us last year again. So, and everyone loved it. All the all the suppliers and all the all, all the, everyone that came, all the house, all the suppliers. Everyone loved it. So, so if people want to get involved in next year's event, uh, contact, contact me. Contact me. Yeah. Yeah. Contact yeah, you here yeah, at Euro yeah. Gold, and uh, we'll put them on the list, and we'll talk to them. We'll talk to them all. And once once we have our flyers and everything done, we'll send them out. You're really getting busy now after COVID. Yeah, we are getting busy. Um, I think as well, people are expecting a bit of a slowdown in the house, housing market, but we just can't see it happening. Um, so yeah, we are really busy. We've got new jobs starting. Um, there's more on the horizon for the new year as well. So things are looking quite good. And it's great to see your dad back in full action now and is, is very busy out around all the sites and here in the office as well. Yeah, he's back, back in five days a week. It's like he's never not been here. <laughs> Um, so yeah, he's doing great, you know, his health and everything um, and everyone likes seeing him back on site. He's back on site four days a week and he's just in the office one day a week now. So yeah, that's really good. Emma, thank you so much for joining us today and a wonderful amount of money raised by Eurogold and all the people involved. I oh, know, thank you Martin. Thank you for spending the day with us on the day and for coming today as well. Well done to everyone at Hope House Hospice for the wonderful care and attention they give to families that they care for. And a big thank you to Damien Brickland and Emma Brickland from the Eurogold Group and Civil Engineering Contractors for the wonderful support that they give to Hope House Hospice each year. And a big thank you to everyone who came along and took part in the day and supported the golf day. And don't forget, if you'd like a nice day out next year, the Eurogold Golf Day is taking place on the 9th of June 2023. See you all there. Now we're going to take a little break 
and we'll see you soon. Have you booked that trip to Ireland yet? Press the green button and visit the island of Ireland. See Ireland.com. Eurogold is driven by being the best civil engineering contractor in the Northwest, ensuring its clients are given the highest level of service that they deserve. Eurogold work in a wide range of industry sectors, including house building, highways, commercial, and industrial build. La Vita is an award-winning, independently run Italian restaurant. Located on Rose Lane in the heart of Liverpool, real Italian style dishes, using the best ingredients, skillfully prepared by our chefs. Come and try our serious Italian experience. The Warrington Irish Club friendly and welcoming club keeping the Irish culture alive. We have Irish and country music every Saturday night, tribute nights, race nights, charity nights and karaoke. All live sports are shown on big screens. We have snooker, dominoes and crown green bowling teams along with arts and craft. Pop in for a friendly welcome and book your event at the Warrington Irish Club. Give Frank a call on 01925 243 363. Mulligan's Funeral and Monumental Services are a family-owned funeral service first established by the late Brian Mulligan in 1996. We provide funeral homes in Gorton, Manchester and Reddish, Stockport and we pride ourselves on giving a friendly and professional service to all the families who use our service. Contact us on 0161 432 0809 Founded in Kilkenny, Ireland in 1702, but lost on a bet on a horse race in Deauville, France, 1918. Sullivan's was re-established a few years ago by direct descendants of two great Kilkenny brewing families, the Smithicks and the Sullivans. We're about to embark on our own journey across the United Kingdom. But this time, we won't bet the brewery. <laughs> Sullivan's. Brewing is in our blood. Press the green button and visit the island of Ireland. See Ireland.com. Welcome back. Now we're off to the Liverpool Irish Centre for a lovely celebration for Kira Lochran, who won the World Championship in Irish dancing. It was always Kira's ambition to be world champion. It was a lovely night with her family and so many of her friends came along to celebrate. Every dancer dreams of being a world champion one day and 20 years later, my dream became true. I couldn't have done it without the army I had behind me. I couldn't have done it without mum and dad. We have sacrificed so much from day one. I started dancing in St. Helens um, for a school called King Academy and then when I was 16, I decided to move to Belfast to try and win the world championships for Dr. Petrie Petri School of Irish Dancing. So how long were you in Belfast for? I've been there for six years and I just moved back home to Liverpool when, because I won the world, so I completed everything I wanted to do. I moved when I just finished my A-levels and I said to Daddy, right, I'm going. So I moved to Belfast and then trained every day until I won the world. So while she was doing her exams at school, she asked her dad and I if she could travel to Belfast for class and we were like, you have to be kidding and she presented a PowerPoint presentation with costings of flights and everything, finish school on a Friday and go on a flight to Belfast and fly back on a Sunday, which she did for the first two years. And then she moved over permanently when she was 17. I am so proud of Kira. She's just reached the goal that she wanted to.
this something you always wanted to achieve? Yeah, so since I was a baby, my lifelong dream was to be a world champion, and now it's, now it's true. Now, the dedication that people need to put in to win a world championship is just unbelievable, isn't it? Yeah, so people don't realise how much hard work Irish dancing is. Um, it's definitely a sport, and I train day and night to try and get that title. Your granddad is really proud of you because he's been on the phone to me quite a number of times telling me all about you and of course he's here tonight. Yeah, Grandad's so proud. He, he wanted it more than anyone for me and I remember ringing him when he was crying down the phone like, oh my God, can't believe it. So yeah, he's definitely proud. Mick, you must be very proud of Kira. Oh, I am. It's a fantastic girl. And as I was told five years ago that she'd be a world champion. And it's come true anyway. You should have gone to Paddy Powers and put on some money. I should, have, I should have done, yeah. Tell me, did you dance yourself when you were a young man? Oh, no, I, I done uh, ordinary dancing, like waltzes and things like that, but I never done Irish dancing, no. My wife did. Right, okay. But she's she done a bit, yeah. I used to love to dance. Yeah. And uh, go to see the show bands and things like that, you know, it was great. Well, all my grandkids and my cousins and everything are here, so it's fantastic, you know. It's lovely to see everyone again, you know, after the pandemic and that, and when things were, we were not so good, but it's, uh, it's a lot better now anyway, thank God, yeah. Sean, what was it like as a dad watching your daughter win the World Championships in Belfast? Two, one, three. <laughs> yeah, it was the most amazing experience ever. We're not very good at showing our emotions as Irish people, but uh, we showed our emotions that day. We <laughs> cried our eyes out, we did, when we, it was announced that she won. But it was fully deserved. She's worked so hard for it. She's uh, practised all her life. She used to practise before she went to school. She practised when she comes home from school. She just uh, lives for Irish dancing, and it was, a great, it was just a lovely finale to the, the whole uh, dancing career. I'm sure you had a great party. Oh, we did. We celebrated <laughs> Wednesday early hours that night. <laughs> Just before COVID hit, I was crowned All-Ireland Champion, so that was the biggest major I'd ever won. Um, before that, I'd won the All-Scotlands, the Great Britons. Um, I'd won every major, American National, so all I needed was the World Championships. And then finally this year in Belfast, so on my home ground, I won the Worlds. Oh, it was meant to be, of course, in Belfast this year. How good did that feel? It was amazing, and it made it so special that everyone could come and watch me as well. So, yeah, it was great. When she was actually Crown Royal Champion, there was some party. Everyone who hadn't booked a room was sleeping on somebody's floor. And all the family were there, weren't they? Because they come from, there was family over from America staying with um, Sean's mom. So they came and from Rome and Madrid. Sean's sister was living in Rome. Sister-in-law was living in Madrid. So they all came, so it was amazing. It really was Everyone such a good together. time. Everyone came together to celebrate it. It was, it was great. The whole day was perfect. Yeah. You're home in your own hometown tonight, of course, here at the Liverpool Irish Centre. What a great night it's been. All your friends are here and your dancing friends as well. Yeah, so it makes it even more special that I can have it here in Liverpool and everyone from Belfast has been able to fly over to come and see me. So, I mean, I must be liked. <laughs> from Cork and my granny's from Clare and then on my dad's side they were from Armagh so a lot of Irish. My mum and dad are the best there is no one like them and uh, there absolutely isn't uh, they they passed on their love for Ireland and all things Irish to us and it was that strongly embedded in us that we passed it on to our children. They play Irish music as well, so we just wanted them to know their heritage and they've never forgotten it, ever. And hopefully they'll pass it on to their children in the future. On the 6th of October, it'll be 60 years. Yeah. Well done to you. She can't get rid of me. <laughs> 
I'm the baby, I'm one of four, um, and everyone else danced, and my mum danced before that, so I was just threw in, didn't have a choice. <laughs> I danced myself years ago for um, Maureen Bolger in the Irish Centre in Liverpool, and I know um, Kathleen Cunningham now is carrying on that with the Bolger Cunningham School of Irish Dance, but that's who I danced for many, many years ago. Now I know where the girls are getting it from. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Yeah, not the dad, that's for sure. <laughs> Rebecca and Megan um, are other two daughters. They have Irish danced also all their life. But when they came to the end of their competitive career, Rebecca set up a dancing school in Liverpool, an Irish dancing school, the Lochran School of Irish Dance, and that's been going since 2013. And um, Megan then got her teaching exam and she joined the school. And my sister in law, Tara Lochran, she joined the teaching team and she's now an adjudicator as well. So she's just passed her adjudicator's exam. So it's a real family concern. Not only just Irish dancing in the family, my one son, Tom, he plays Gaelic football. He played in Liverpool for uh, John Mitchells, who's done very well, very successful over the years. But he's just changed jobs now and moved to Dubai. And he's joined the Gaelic team over there, Jemira Gales. And he was playing this morning and uh, done very well. Yeah, so he's, he's doing well. There's no end to the talent in your family, I'll tell you. I don't know where to get it from, man. <laughs> Certainly not the dad, it must be the mum. <laughs> Everyone's come to uh, celebrate the culmination of Kira's achievement. Uh, all the family are here, all our friends. Uh, yeah, it's great to see everybody here celebrating. It's been a lifetime want of hers. She's always, that was her goal, the ultimate goal. And she's won a lot of other major championships, but she was never gonna quit until she got it. And it was just amazing that she did get it in Belfast and all the family were there to see it and all her friends. Have you been to see Kira dance many times? Oh yes, a few, quite a few times, yeah. I was told that she would be world champion and it's come true, so that's, that, that, that made my day, made my day. Well done Kira, and many congratulations to you. Your family are so proud of you. Now that's about it for this week. Henry McGlade will be back with us with his show from County Mayo next Thursday evening at 7 o'clock and we'll be here as usual at 7.30. Until then, thank you all for watching. <laughs>